folks, how you doing? Papa Joe here. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a... Let me reach up here and see if I can stabilize that a little bit. No promises. If you watch, and the highlights are in the horizon there, you will see uh, the cross, the tallest cross in the western hemisphere is what I think it is. I'm need to take me a little break anyway. This is something I've been wanting to uh, get on film for you. So I started way back here where I finally seen it. Now they actually have built a lot of windmills around here so it's a lot harder to spot than it used to be. But I've got it going just so that However far away y'all can see it, there's the one on seven mile marker. But uh, you know what what you're looking for, what you're looking at. And this might be one of those where uh, after you spot it, uh, up there on your left, left side of the interstate. It might be one of them deals where you want to uh, back up and watch this film again. Yeah, I'm on the rough part of the road. As soon as I get around Swifty there, I'll ease back over. Now that cross is starting to fade down under some of the trees and stuff there. As we get closer. They have turned this into a rest area type thing. Uh, my buddy Pork Chop that you've heard me talk about. This was one of his favorite places to stop and sleep. He said that uh, he got a lot of comfort sleeping underneath this big old cross. I've never stopped here. Uh, now my understanding down by Corpus Christi, they have now built or they're going to build or something, one that's even bigger. Don't quote me on that. But for the longest time, and in my opinion, this one here is still the tallest. Uh, there's a couple I've seen scattered out, one over in Tennessee and whatnot, but... All right, are you seeing it come back into play again there?
45 degrees out there. It ain't too windy. secondary road. So normally I wouldn't even be doing this. The things I do for y'all. Well, let's see what they've got for truck parking. I'm going to pause y'all for a few minutes. Well, there's the start of it all. Cross of our Lord Jesus Christ Ministries. Ain't that cool? We will uh, get out in a few minutes and have a walkabout. Well, is that the table over there? This is going to be very interesting, people. This is going to be very interesting. And I thought what we're looking at here on the right, those rocks and stuff, I thought that was some construction in here. And it is not. All right, well, let me uh, get set up here and we'll get out and take a walk about. All right, folks. Uh, Going to be some wind. This is where we came in from. That's a little feeder road. I don't know if there's a rhyme or reason to how you're supposed to do this place. So, uh, I'm gonna walk over here to these buildings. With well, the way the light is, I can't see my screen here. Now I can actually see something. It looks like it's a chapel. Let me peek in a window here. Okay, we can go in here. How y'all doing? Yeah. I'm doing a little video for my Facebook or my YouTube. So don't mind me. I will stay out of your way. Oh, you're fine. 
what you're looking at there, folks, is if you remember, I was telling you about the death shroud. This is a replica of it. It says it's the exact replica of it. And unfortunately, we have so much reflection, you're really going to have to blow it up and look hard at it. That up there is the face that was on it. Three different images. And here's the National Geographic. Now you can look this up. There's what issue it was, June 1980. Oh, and that's hard on my arm. Actually, my shoulders. This is the one the Reader's Digest came out with. So if you want to uh, look it up, now basically what the experts had said about this shroud is that it was a photo, a negative, and the only way it could have been made was by a sudden bright exposure of light. Now remember, they was in a borrowed tomb, so it was dark in there. And the tomb had a big rock in front of it, so it was definitely dark. So uh, all the Christians are saying that that was when God put the life back into Jesus. It was that sudden flash of light that caused this negative the shroud to do as it has. Can you see it any better from over here? I Not can't really. see it without the glare. Yeah, that second one you can almost see better. Yeah. Here, I've been talking to him with my finger over the mic again. I hate the mic on this thing. Uh oh. You're all right, brother. You're all right. I appreciate you. All right, folks, let's go on back outside. I don't know what that, what is that you heard, but it, uh, like I said, it was supposed to have been made from the bright flash of uh, the good Lord putting life back into Jesus is what the shroud was made from, or the, uh, the images, the negative images. As they say, it was like a, uh, let me make sure I'm not covering up more stuff. Okay, this is just their maintenance barn. All right, now, what we're looking at here, I can tell you just from looking, this is a duplicate, or not necessarily a duplicate. This is uh, what they have made to make it look like Jesus's tomb that he was buried in. So there to the left of the entrance. How y'all doing? Just honky dory. That's good. <laughs> Hi, Hello. Now the round one right there is the one that should have been rolled away from the doorway from the cave's entrance. Now, let's see what we got. We have a praying angel. This is nothing but a borrowed tomb. And right there is where Jesus would have laid. So, that's pretty awesome. Well, let me back up and show you the exit. Hey, brother. There's the 
door coming in. Oh, this is cool. I love it. I hope y'all are enjoying it. All right, I'm gonna. I'm gonna just keep shooting. Y'all uh, long for the ride. You're long for the ride. Oh, I will kind of point it over this way. I'm not exactly sure yet what we're gonna have there. I shroom that. A shroom. Boy, I can talk good. Uh. Man, I went brain dead there. The hill that Jesus was crucified on would have been uh, Calvary's Hill. There we go. I assume that that's what this is. And, and just so that you know, here's the cross. And you can see the people below it. Those people are just under six foot tall. That's a big cross, folks. That's a big cross. All right. Let's see what we have here. Okay. This is where Jesus was breaking the bread. There's Philip, Andrew, Peter, Jesus, John, James. And Judas. I'm sorry, brother. No, no, you're okay. You're okay. Take your time. Man. Well, I've got a YouTube channel, and I've spread the word a little bit. I don't know how many times I've came by here. Keep up the good work, brother. Well, I appreciate you. Simple Living with Papa Joe. It's a YouTube channel. Look me up Papa sometime. Joe. Simple okay. Living with Papa Joe. Yes, sir. This says, Pillar of Truth. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will rise. I will raise him on the last day, for my flesh is true food. <clears throat> and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have the life because of me. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Jews quarreled amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Praise God. The Last Supper. While they were eating, Jesus took bread and said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. Pillar of truth. This is my body that is for you. And do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cu the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. First Corinthians. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord unworthy will have to answer for the body and the blood of the Lord. A person should examine himself and so eat the bread and drink the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. There you go, folks. I got to back up a little bit. The walkway here is crosses. I'm going to walk back out here pillar of truth but we preach Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles 
For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. So I can already see around out there we're going to have some words. We, uh, okay. And all the way around this is showing him having to come around. This is different steps on his walk. Oh, and there is the last dinner. And up on top, there's Calvary. There's Calvary, there's the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So let us do our walk up here. It is chilly out here, peoples. <sighs> this is the repentant theft. Said to the unrepentant theft, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same co condemnation. We have been condemned justly. For the sins we receive corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing. This man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. There's our Savior. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent to the, in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. Amen. The unrepentant thief said to Jesus, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. All right, folks, I'm going to pause you for a minute. All right, we're walking back down the steps. I sure hope this is making for y'all. i tell you what, I've heard that it is an emotional journey here. And I guarantee you, it uh, tore me up a little bit. I'll admit it. It's cool. My hands are cold. All right, here we go. I didn't realize I had turned it off. That looks to me like one of the angels killing the serpent. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in the battle, but our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray, and do thou, O priest of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls and men. Amen. Okay, well, dead gummit. That's a little store there, and I did not bring my wallet with me. My hands are freezing. Oh. I'm gonna step inside for a minute. Well, maybe I won't. Let's see what we got here.
How you doing? All right, folks, this is inside their store. If you all ever make it out here, you need to really stop here. Hold on a second. This is their donations, greatly appreciated. Well, I ain't sure what I got in my pocket. Yeah. There we go. I gave them what I got. Folks, don't mind me, I forget half the time that I've got the camera on. I'm just trying to take it all in myself. It's an awesome place. Well, me and the wife almost stopped by here. I wish now that we had of. She, uh, owie. And it didn't work out. We was watching for it and running a little late on our time. Uh oh. All right, welcome back out to the truck. You can see it out yonder. We got the Ten Commandments over there. I like these pillars of truth that they have done. Many arrogant people misinterpret scripture and it leads them to ruin. Boy, ain't that the truth. If anyone comes to you and does not bring the doctrine, do not receive him in your house or even greet him. For whoever greets him shares in his evil works. We instruct you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to shun any brother who conducts himself in a disorderly way and not according to the tradition they received from us. Pillar of truth. But if I should be delayed, you should know how to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of truth. All right, folks. My uh, this is the eighth station. This one is the seventh. Oh, let me 
He's around here and find the first. Six, five, four, three, two. So this one over here would be the first, okay? Imagine that it's going to be where uh, Jesus is in front of, uh, oh, dead gummit. What was his name? First station. And here we're showing Jesus tied up. Standing before him. Jesus is condemned to death. Pilate, that was his name. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They should own they only shouted loud or crucify him. But uh Pilate called for water and washed his hands in front of the crowd, declaring, I am innocent of the blood of this man, of this just man. And that is what you see him doing. That you see him washing his hands. Well, let's go to number two. Ooh, my hands are cold. I hope y'all appreciate this. All right. Jesus with his cross. Second station. Jesus carries his cross. He emptied himself and took the form of a slave, being born in the likeness of man. And we're right here by the cross, folks. There she is. Third station. Jesus falls the first time. I looked about, but there was no one to help. I was appalled that there was no one to lend support. Fourth station. Jesus meets his mother Mary for for he has looked upon his servant and her lowliness at age, ages to come shall call me blessed. Uh, she gave birth to a son, a mild child, des destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Now this is still in nine minutes or something. I guess I'm going to have to have my boy put them together for us. I hope it all takes. Fifth station. A man called Simon of Cree was coming in from the fields and they pressed him into service to carry the cross. So he's helping carry it. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or see you thirsty and give you drink? The seventh station. Jesus falls a second time. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross so that free from sin we might live for righteousness by his wounds you have been healed eighth station see there's two women there Jesus confronts the women of Jerusalem a great crowd followed him, including women who laminated over him. Jesus turned and said, Do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. Amen. Sound like a loose stone over there. Nice station. Jesus falls the third time. I am like water poured out. All of my bones are racked. My throat is dried up. 
Like dried clay, my tongue craves to my jaw, cleaves to my jaws. To the dust of death, you have brought me down. That's him where he fell. And here's where they're stripping his clothes off. Tenth station. Jesus stripped of his garments. They took his garments and divided them four ways, a share for each soldier. They divide my garments among them, and for my venture they cast lots. <clears throat> Eleventh station. Folks, I can't see it with a glare, so I'm just trying to get the pictures for you. Jesus is nailed to the cross. Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers close in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. Uh-uh-uh. I don't understand how they could do that stuff. You know, even by order. I know it was the time of the day. See, and then at the 12th station, you go up there where we already been. Jesus dies on the cross. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. Thirteenth station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. They shall look on him whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only son. Fourteenth station. Jesus is laid in the Holy Spirit Specular. Then, having brought a linen shroud, Joseph of Abraham took him down, wrapped him in linen, and laid him in the tomb, which has been hewed out of a rock. And that's where we went a while ago, into that one over there. Oh. All right, folks. This is, uh, Something I've actually been wanting to do for quite a while, and I've never made it here. I uh, looking wow, straight up, literally. I hope this took. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope my hands will thaw out. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. God loves you so much, He sent His only Son. His only son died on the cross for you and I, for our sins. That's the only way that we can see the Father is through the Son. The only way to heaven is through the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't care what anybody tells you. That is what the Bible teaches. And as much as they try to dispute the Bible, the Bible keeps throwing them curveballs and proving itself to be true. All right, y'all. God bless. I hope you enjoyed this. Bye. Ugh.